This training video is brought to you by K-Alliance. K-Alliance provides high-quality instructor-led training videos for desktop, IT and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free 7-day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and we hope you learned something new. Real learning, real videos, real success. In this demo, we're going to be looking at how we utilize our import-export wizard from within our SQL Server Management Studio. So let's go ahead and dive right into our Management Studio and see how it works. Now, when you're working with moving data into or out of an existing database, and it's a fairly simple process with no complex transformations that you need to do, then your import-export wizard gives you a very clean way of getting that process started. So if I were to come to my AdventureWorks database, for example, I would have the ability to move data out of this. We'll do an export example. And it's the exact same wizard, whether you're doing your import or your export. So I'm right-clicking on my database. And under my tasks, down near the bottom, I have my import data and export data. Again, as I said, it's the exact same wizard. The only difference is, are you setting up a destination inside of SQL Server to outside or the reverse? So we'll do our export. Now, when you're working with this, you have the ability to move data out based on the wizard settings. So the first thing it has you come up with is what's the source? Where is this data going to be coming from? You'll notice it's pre-populated that it's going to be a SQL Server native client, and it's populated the server name and the database name, because those were all things that were selected when I did my right click. So we'll just go ahead and leave those in their positions and hit Next. From there, we have to choose the destination. So to keep things simple, we'll go ahead and we'll do something outside of SQL Server, say a flat file destination. So that means I'm going to take data from inside AdventureWorks, and I'm going to send it out to a flat file. And then I have to browse and put in the file name that I want to create. So we'll go ahead and we'll go to our D drive. Within our D drive, we'll go down to our MKTG. And that's where we'll send our data. Notice that we can choose between text and CSV. I'll go ahead and leave it as text file. And then we'll give it a name. And we will do customer data. So this will be the customer export. So now I've set my, my source and my destination. We have some other options here that include you know, what locale, what language are we doing this in, what's our basic language structure, code page structure. Leave all those things in the default as a general rule of thumb, if you want to incorporate Unicode or not. But from there, we also have our format. Is it delimited, fixed width, or ragged width? Ragged right, excuse me. And then we have our text qualifier, if you want to put one in. Finally, we have the column names in the first row of data. So if we leave that checked, that means we're expecting it to create that first row as column headers. So we've got our basic structure that's going to produce a customer export.txt file with column headers and comma delimited data. So we'll go ahead and hit Next. And now we need to specify where, what data do we want to pull. We told it which database, but we have not told it which table or view or query to utilize. So what we're going to see here is that we have two options. One is to copy the data directly from a table or view that already exists or we could write in the SQL statement ourselves. We'll go ahead and let the wizard do the work for us. Now that we're in our copy scenario, I need to tell it exactly which table I want to work with. Now, since we called this customer export, I'm going to go ahead and stick with the idea of working with my customer data. So I believe that is under sales.customer. So I've identified the table that I want, my delimiters of comma and for the row, so each new row new line in the text file is a new row, and each column is separated by a comma. If I want to, I can edit the mappings, and I can look at the actual data that's going to be coming back and how it's going to translate it over for our text environment. And I can make changes here if I need to. Separate from that, I can also preview the data that's going to be coming out to get a sense of what kind of information I'm exporting. When everything is the way I expect, I can go ahead and hit Next. From here, 
I have the option of running it immediately and also of saving an SSIS package. Now what this does is this will actually create a physical package that I can either store in SQL Server or in the file system and that can be encrypted and the idea is that I could then go back to this package later to add flexibility or functionality using SSIS or simply to store as part of my archive record of all the transactional things I've done. So we'll go ahead and create that SSIS package so we can take a look at it in a moment. We'll hit next and because I chose to save the SSIS package I have to give the package a name. We'll also call it customer export. Notice it's creating a customer export.dtsx file. We'll go ahead and put that on our D drive along with all the other files. So now we have a new package that's being created as well as the output being a text file. And we'll go to our next button. It allows us to review all of our choices and when we're ready, we hit finish. It then runs through the process of attempting to grab the data from the database and export it out and it even tells us how many rows it successfully exported to the d slash mktg slash customer export txt file. When it's done, we can go ahead and hit close and we can verify that file looks the way we want. So we'll come into our file system, we'll go to our D drive, we'll go to our MKTG folder, and we see inside of here there is now an export, customer export.ttsx and a customer export.txt. If I open up the text document, I see all of the records with the column headings, comma separated, and each line is a separate row from the database. So that's how your import-export wizard works. It allows you to move data into and out of SQL Server through a simple set of steps that are pre-built for you that will even build a package for you that you can utilize within SSIS. And as a final step, we'll go ahead and open that up in SSIS so we can see what it produced in our data tools. So we're going to go ahead and open up our SQL Server data tools. And from here, we're going to open an existing file. I'm going to go ahead and browse to that DTSX package that it created for us. And what it generates from this is an interface that allows us to manipulate the SSIS package post-creation. So we see that it has one data flow task within it. And if I open up that data flow task, I see that it has two steps, a source, which is the customer table, and a destination, which is the text file, and it has connection manager items, which tell us how it made those connections. So this is the basic structure of the work that it did, and I would now have the ability to manipulate this for future runs if I so chose. So hopefully with this, you have a better understanding of how your import-export wizard functions within the SQL Server platform. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.